Alright, well hey everybody, welcome back and let's get into talking about some of the trending crypto news articles today. As always, my name is John and you can find any article we talk about today down in the description below. So let's hop into the first thing. A uh, pretty substantial cross-chain communication uh, proposal is going live here soon. So it's finally uh, reaping some results, all this research they've been doing. So Ontology, Neo, and Switcheroo collaborated to launch what they're calling the Heterogeneous Interoperability Protocol Alliance, or much easier to say, the Poly Network. While Near, the Near project, has launched the Rainbow Bridge, great Mario Kart reference there, connecting Near to Ethereum. So blockchains have long been seen as kind of like data silos, like they just rise up nice and tall, and they do everything great internally, but they don't really talk to anything else going on. But uh, cross-chain interoperability has been becoming increasingly more and more important as we, you know, we're kind of moving away in the industry from that. Also, as opposed to just, you know, constantly competing and beating each other down, you cooperate a little bit. Each crypto does kind of a little bit of a different thing and it's a little bit of a different take, you know. Um, so by doing this, it allows them to communicate with each other, share info back and forth, and all in all, make everything a big happy hug time. So uh, Ontology has also already been connected to Ethereum through cross-chain functionality. So now that the Poly Network has been launched, the ad interaction is now expanded to include Neo and Cosmos. Uh, like I said already, Near is connected to Ethereum. So Ethereum's kind of this weird like leveraging point where they all interact. And it's pretty cool. So through Poly Network, which is an enterprise leveraging the Ontology blockchain, they'll be able to seamlessly interact with an enterprise leveraging Ethereum, Cosmos, or Neo, helping these platforms overcome challenges to scalability, mainstream adoption, and collaboration. Uh, right now, this protocol only supports transferring ERC-20 tokens to and from Ethereum, but the plan is to add more stuff. Uh, Near co-founder, uh, Alex Skidinov, explained that developers can avoid excess fees on Ethereum by transferring the, quote, performance or gas the critical parts to near while keeping their Ethereum native user base. Yeah, they're testing it right now, but that's the idea. It would help alleviate a lot of congestion on Ethereum by doing so. Uh, many other projects are also trying this. Uh, Tether uh, was moved over to the OMG network, Omnivise Go, in an effort to ease the gas burden on Cardano. So again, each individual blockchain is struggling with increasing their TPS or their transactions per second. So by operating together, they create this web where one can hang on a little bit more and, and take the weight off of someone else. Um, so it's kind of nice that we're doing this and I'm really happy for Neo, Ontology, and Cosmos. So hey, not too bad for them, not too bad of a way to start off the day. But we don't just got that to talk about, which is news in and of itself. We've got Binance. So as of today, I believe, uh, the crypto exchange Binance announced it would be launching BNB staking on the trading platform. For those of you who don't know, BNB is their native token. The staking of Binance coin, BNB, on the platform commences today, August the 20th at 1 p.m. UTC, which I believe has already passed. Uh, additionally, it will be via 7-day and 30-day products, and participants will earn up to 25% APR on their BNB. So that's pretty darn good. Like, you'd be struggling to find a bank account that would give you 1%, and you'd be struggling to find a mutual fund or index fund that's going to give you more than 10 So eh, 25 is not too bad. Uh, furthermore, all the BNB staked on the Binance platform will be used to participate in Kava's CDP, which is kind of interesting. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Kava is a platform that went through crowdfunding on Binance's Launchpad, which is kind of like their incubator for new startups in the crypto space. At the time of writing, there's about 36 million in BNB currently locked into the Kava DeFi platform. 
So that type of synergy might spell big things. Um, result of this BNB staking, Binance coin has spiked up, I believe, according to this, it's sitting at $23.30, up roughly a dollar. Um, that's not quite the uh, jump I would expect from that announcement, but as long as this continues, the amount of people who will be wanting to buy and lock up BNB is, is probably going to do something pretty good to the Binance coin price. Binance coin is a pretty successful coin. I've got nothing bad, honestly, that I can say about them. Um, as well, Kava is probably going to benefit since they have so much locked up in their DeFi platform already. Uh, but Kava project could, could be interesting to keep an eye on. And this is kind of like one of those things where I have to be like, I'm not an actual investor. So take everything I say with a huge grain of salt. Um, but this article is postulating that once they get wind that the Kava project is in the DeFi arena, demand to own Kava will increase in conjunction with BNB and its price should go up long term. That's what this article is suggesting. A little bit shilly, if you ask me. I wonder if uh, this John guy over here, not me, different John, very common name I know, has got a little bit of money in Kava and wants to see it go up. That's just me speculating because the article seemed a little meh, but still pretty big news and i'm surprised i found it on ethereum world news and not on like coin telegraph or like one of the bigger ones that i draw a lot of articles from but it's still really good news i expect we'll be seeing a little, this popping up everywhere tomorrow so uh let's hop on over though talk about why erm everyone's favorite project where the creator thinks it's worthless and it's now actually worth more than bitcoin per coin it's not more by market cap, which is the important metric. But good old Andrew Crone, the man who once said this token is inherently worthless, uh, has recently made security audits of his project publicly available. He explained to Cointelegraph that he had been previously withholding the audits, which were completed months ago, so as not to give users a false sense of security. Uh, this Andre guy is a pretty interesting dude. If you've just now joining up, he did once say his token is completely useless. He created the Wi-Fi token because he wanted to not have to deal with the day-to-day -day running of Wi-Earn Finance. So he created a self-governing community so that way he just didn't have to. <laughs> so he's, a, he's an interesting dude. Uh, he said he uh, refused to publish the audits because he doesn't want people to get a false sense of security from them. Um, he dropped the five audits onto the project's GitHub repository. Uh, they were performed between February and January this year by auditors like Certic and Quantstamp. Uh, some of the vulnerabilities that were discovered were classified as critical in them, so eh, they found some stuff. Uh, Certic identified a major vulnerability under which quite common situations it could temporarily block a user from withdrawing all of their funds. Uh, Crone did respond to that by saying it was actually a design choice, but is still technically a vulnerability. Uh, he said, if you lend, the risk always exists. There are more assets borrowed than the available liquidity to withdraw. So he did add that other major DeFi projects like Compound and Ava share, share this vulnerability. Uh, he decided to publish these audits of proof that he subjects his code to external scrutiny. But regardless, people throw, according to him, quote, money into contracts when they see the word audited. Um, another DeFi project, which we talked about on this channel, Yam Finance, recently uh, bit the big one due to an irreconcilable bug after launching without external adults or apparently a competent adult. <laughs> but yeah, audits are important. I'm glad Yearn is doing them and publishing them good and all. You've got critical flaws that you're publishing on the GitHub. That way people can, you know, help you work on resolving them. Not a bad problem. But hey, uh, that's it for Wire. And let's hop over and talk about BlockFi real quick. Just a quick shout out to them. CEO and founder of BlockFi, Zach Prince, announced his company had closed a Series C funding round for 50 million smackaroonies. It's part of the investment round led by Anthony Pomp Pompolano of Morgan, of Morgan Creek Digital. Pomp will join BlockFi's board of directors. Uh, this is actually their third third round of funding that's been completed by the company in the past 12 months, which 
dang, people are just throwing money at them, uh, which according to an official announcement is a testament to its rapid growth. BlockFi specified the newly secured funds will be utilized to expand the team further and develop new business lines. Eh, okay. Uh, the statement also asserted that the company's revenue has grown tenfold over the past year, and BlockFi is on pace to reach 100 million in revenue over the next 12 months. Uh, keep in mind, revenue is great, but if none of it's profit, then what are you doing? Which, granted, you know, you don't expect a big company to be profitable, well, any company to be profitable in the first year. Um, I think. Uh, Disney Plus is a great example. They don't expect to be profitable till 2022. You got to be willing to run at a loss while you invest in your infrastructure and building up. So, Mr. Pomp, Morgan Creek Digital's co founder and one of their partners, will be joining BlockFi's board of directors as part of this investment. He said that his company made its first investment into BlockFi in early 2019 and was impressed by how much the team has grown since then. So, they're dropping a little bit more money on him, and this dude picks up a board seat where he gets some cushy, cushy, cushy benefits and stock options and all that kind of fun stuff. So, he'll probably become a multi billionaire because this is going to take off. Well, good for him, I guess. So, he also predicted that the future of finance is digital. So, like traditional assets such as stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities, will eventually get digitized as the world evolves. Eh, I think that's a fair assessment. Uh, I feel like you guys would agree with that. And investors will require a proper wealth management platform to serve as their headquarters in this new world, and that's where they want BlockFi to be. Not a bad idea. They're positioning selves, themselves for a future that they see coming, and I agree with them that it is coming, so good on them. I um, hope I could make uh, that much money by just investing into one of these things, but alrighty. Well, here, let's hop on over here in just a sec. I'm already halfway done. We are burning today. All right, well, hey, let's hop on over, talk a little bit about Grayscale. Oh, yeah. They're uh, still popping in the news. So for those of you who aren't aware, aren't aren't aware, boy, uh, two grayscale trusts, one for Litecoin, the other for good old Bitcoin Cash, started trading publicly these this week. So early investors in the os in in the assets assets. Oh boy, I need some coffee. I don't know about you. If you guys got a big old cup of one. Uh, and the Grayscale Trust for Litecoin and Bitcoin are making immense profits just two days after the trust started trading. Uh, the Grayscale Litecoin Trust is currently trading at a premium of 753%, with the BCH Trust trading at a premium of 351. Mm. Dear Lord. The trust, which opened in April of 2018, solicited and accredited investors, i.e. very rich, like two hundred thousand dollars a year in income rich um and they've invested pretty heavily in this so on monday grayscale made these trusts publicly tradable this meant that the underlying assets in the trust can be traded like stocks but why would shares trade at a premium if the shares represent the underlying currency well according to arcane research one of the main reason is that these trading funds are the only way american retail investors well, can invest in cryptocurrencies through their 401k because there is no such thing as a crypto ETF despite all of us trying really hard. So currently the Ethereum trust is trading at a mere 93% premium but in the early June it traded at an 804% premium. Uh, the Bitcoin trust is currently trading at a 23% premium and I know when it first came out it was trading well above that mark as well. So the premiums show that the public demand for crypto exposure is high and that the market is ripe for an ETF, which is known as an, an ETF or an exchange traded fund is a financial product that lets people buy shares and in indexes that track brackets, track baskets of assets. The SEC, for those of you don't know it took up all of like 2018 and 2019 from my memory uh, the sec has several times rejected proposals for a bitcoin etf on the grounds that crypto and bitcoin markets are still rife with manipulation and while i'm not happy that they didn't approve it i don't disagree with them that there might still be some manipulation going on on some of the smaller exchanges but you're gonna have that with a new asset so Eventually, the Band-Aid is going to have to get ripped 
off, so they might as well just get it over with. <laughs> That's just my frustration. But interesting to see just how not these trusts, so you can't even, you're just buying into trusts that are holding these coins. You're not actually buying the coins themselves, and they're doing phenomenal. Just imagine what's going to happen to the freaking crypto market when you can finally just buy the coins directly and easily, like all the Joe Schmoes want to do, and they can throw them in their 401ks and their Roth IRAs and all that fun stuff. It's going to be big news for all of us who've been invested since 2017 and prior. So, it's pretty good. I've got to talk about uh, synthetics a little bit. Weiss Ratings has given it a pretty big thumbs up. Uh, they're going with uh, the growth and potential returns from Ethereum's DeFi sector is currently two of the hottest topics in the crypto space. The growth and the potential returns. Investors are eagerly looking for the next token that will skyrocket, and Weiss is saying it's going to be the synthetics protocol. Now, the report they put out notes that SNX is at the heart of the growing DeFi and examines the advantages of it compared to the traditional financial system. According to Weiss Ratings, the advantages are manifold in terms of cost and time alone, referring to banks, brokers, and other traditional intermediaries. Weiss Ratings states that synthetics will eat their lunch. Mm, pretty strong words. Uh, Synthetics does have another advantage, which according to Weiss, will continue to push investors to its platform. Uh, anyone can trade it. You only need to have an asset and an Ethereum address. There's no KYC policy, no wait times, and no requirements from the banks. We'll see how long that lasts in some way, shape, or form, but Synthetics is decentralized, so it's kind of hard to know who to make do what. <laughs> Uh, unlike traditional exchanges, Synthetics does not use the order book model for trades. Instead, liquidity depends on the level of collateralized SNX. The more collateral there is, the more sense that can be made, and the more liquid the corresponding trading pair is. Because how it works and the benefits mentioned above, Weiss Ratings predicts that Synthetics and its native token will cannibalize, quote, the agents of the traditional financial system. So already they are pretty good, pretty strong words there, pretty pro-synthetics. This is a little shilly, but this is his summary of the article, so the article might come across, his summary of the report, sorry, so that report might come across a little bit better. So, uh, synthetics has long since ceased to be an insider tip. The SNX price has been rising up about 45% within the last two weeks, 63% in the last month, and 1940% in the last year. Uh, it's sitting around 635 when they wrote this article. It has been doing remarkably well. Uh, Weiss also notes that SNX will grow to, due to incentives for staking the token. Uh, the rewards for staking can vary. They are pretty attractive. Uh, 70 to 80% of the SNX supply is currently staked. So uh, demand as demand increases, there's definitely going to be some uptick because most of it's going to be locked away. And finally, Weiss predicts an increase in the price of SNX due to the emergence of the financial derivatives market. As the report states, buying SNX is like buying stock in a highly liquid crypto exchange with derivatives trading. So dear Lord, they really, and I mean really like synthetics. Um, so that's pretty good. Weiss is a pretty reputable name um, in the space. It's one I recognize. If you put a gun to my head and told me to tell you five things about Weiss, I probably couldn't. I just recognize the name and know that it is referenced often in these types of articles. So I'm willing to bet um, it's pretty reputable. I've also heard it referenced in non-crypto articles as well. So they put out ratings on a lot of different subjects. So definitely something to look into. I've been keeping an eye on synthetics. Boy, if I had the kind of money to invest in every crypto project I wanted, I wouldn't need to invest in crypto projects. Hmm. So, all right. A uh, fun little think piece for you here, getting close to rounding things out for the day. Uh, Bitcoin is up against a lot of different coins. So, it's actually up 66% on the year over the American dollar, 128% over Brazil. 
108.2% over, I believe, oh, I'm going to get crucified in the comments for this, but I believe that's the South African flag, but I could be wrong. So Bitcoin has performed significantly better against devaluing currencies, often with high rates of inflation. Uh, for instance, the Argentinian peso recorded a recorded 53.9% inflation in 2019, its highest in over 50 years, or sorry, 30 years. Either way, 50% is way too much. Uh, for those of you who don't know, America tries to keep inflation around 2%, though that's probably going to be changing with the way old uh, corona is wrecking the economy. Against the Brazilian lira and the Argentinian peso, Bitcoin posted 128 and 103% gains. The digital asset also recorded a 56 to 69% gain against reserve currencies like the US dollar and the euro. Uh, it's also oh, killing the Venezuelan Bolivar. Well, the Bolivar has been hyperinflating for way too long now. It's pretty bad. Uh, the unstable nature of many economies in Latin America frequently results in new all-time highs for peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin transactions in Venezuela and Argentina, because as your currency collapses, well, you might as well invest in something that is holding its value and in fact getting close to doubling its value or tripling its value on what you put into it just by inflation alone. Uh, Bitcoin has strong performance against all global currencies year to date and it could strengthen the argument that bitcoin is evolving as a store of value though it is important to note that the bitcoin price dropped more than any other commodity or index in march of 2020 when the big old corona crash happened uh, but despite this bitcoin rebounded strongly uh, it peaked at twelve thousand four hundred dollars not too long ago it's still trading at eleven eight fifty five um it's pretty good. Most commodities that crashed in March haven't even recovered to that level they were before. Um, but Bitcoin is up, 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 up. And this economic uncertainty could be the fuel that fires the bull run to end all bull runs. Golden bull run. Millionaire crypto for everybody. Woo. All right. Uh, rounding things out. Uh, just a little think piece. Not a little thing piece, a little article put out uh, about Ripple and how it could be a complementary asset to central bank digital currencies. Uh, the senior director of global operations at Ripple, Ami Yoshikawa, spoke in an interview with the Japanese financial portal FX Coin about this relationship between XRP and central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs. Uh, he is quoted as saying, there are different types of crypto assets, but I believe that the role of XRP as a bridge currency is not in competition with stablecoins and CBDCs, but on the contrary, is complementary. We believe XRP as an independent crypto asset will build a bridge between different stablecoins and CBDCs to address the liquidity problem and create synergies. Basically, uh, you know, instead of you trying to convert like uh, a digital dollar to a digital peso you can just convert the digital dollar to xrp and the and go from there um eh, yeah we'll see um in the interview yoshikawa also stressed the importance of on-demand liquidity or odl for ripple the xrp based payment solution is currently the focus of ripple's efforts in particular the company is currently looking to open up new payment corridors which as yoshikawa emphasized involves some regulatory regulatory tasks and the conclusion of new partnerships so they got to make nice they got to play ball so that way they can get into those areas so they can open up these payment corridors ripple has been pretty quiet but doing rather well um their idea to you know hit that friction area of international finance exchanges has been lucrative for them to say the least um they seem to have a good number of partnerships though it remains to be seen if that's going to reflect another explosion of price like we saw in 2017 where it peaked i think it was over getting close to or over three dollars it's currently sitting around 30 cents right now so it's not quite there yet but it's pulling all the right stops to make it so but hey that does it for the trending articles today if you've made it this far well hey not subscribe you can hear the sultry tones of my voice every day
day. And isn't that something to desire? Or, you know, you can listen whenever. You don't have to listen to me every day. Uh, my wife does. And she's not a fan, so I can't imagine you guys would be. But uh, links down in the description. And you can follow to check out and learn more about all the articles we talked about today. And before we go, past few days have been rough for the crypto market. Uh, currently, Bitcoin's pretty flat. Ethereum's up about a percent. XRP's pretty flat. Chainlink's down four percent, but it's it had such a crazy day. No one really knows how to how to or a crazy month, crazy year. No one really knows what's going to happen next with that coin. Uh, just that it's here to stay. Bitcoin Cash is pretty flat. Litecoin is flat. SV is flat, and Cardano and Binance Coin are both up in the two percent range. So not too bad. Binance Coin is down from that 230, 2330 that it was talking about in the article we discussed, and it's 2307. But uh, that will do it today. There's your crypto update. I will talk to y'all tomorrow more than likely. Peace.